Thank you for allowing me to speak on this occasion. My name is Jörg Haas and I've spent my professional life analyzing the evolution of the global economy and its relationship with the climate issue. During the past 30 years, we have seen a long evolution of the international conversation about climate action. Numerous conferences have been held, agreements have been signed, but for most of the time, financial markets and the real economy seemed largely untouched. For a long period, profits of fossil fuel companies have thrived despite all this talk. But now times are changing. The tide is turning. We are at a tipping point in the global economy and the full power of financial markets is turning against fossil fuels. I will lay out my argument in 10 short points. Number one, there is a carbon bubble out there. The concept has been introduced by the London-based financial market think tank Carbon Tracker in 2011. It showed that fossil fuel companies were planning to burn five times more fossil fuels than the world could burn under a two degree scenario. Since then, the discrepancy has grown. Carbon Tracker predicted that at some point, the investors would understand that the reserve fossil fuel companies are showing in their books are worth nothing. The carbon bubble would burst, the market valuations of fossil fuel companies would collapse. Since 2011, the concept of the carbon bubble has made inroads into the financial community. Now the time of reckoning has come, the carbon bubble is bursting. Number two, we are at a political tipping point. All the big economies have now made pledges to go for net zero emissions by 2050 or 2030. Not just the EU, China, Japan, UK, South Korea, and now the US and the Biden, they all know only one way down to zero. Third, clean technologies are taking off and the market rewards it. In particular, the oil market is going to shrink with the electric car revolution sweeping through markets. Tesla is now by far the most valuable car company globally. Volkswagen is betting its whole corporate strategy on electric cars. And General Motors, the biggest US car maker, has now decided to stop selling conventional cars by 2035. And many are saying this will happen earlier. Fourth, Fossil gas is now facing a brutal competition as renewable energies are now the cheapest form of electricity generation in most countries. Saying this are not green tree huggers, but the International Energy Agency. Fifth, peak oil demand is here. We have already passed peak coal demand in 2013 globally. BP now recognizes in its most recent World Energy Outlook that we may have passed peak oil demand. Oil demand is projected never to return to pre-COVID crisis levels in all three of its scenarios. Consequently, markets are punishing big oil companies. Exxon has been the most valuable corporation globally 10 years ago. Its return to shareholders is negative for the past years. Now it is being expelled by the Dow Jones index. Its cost of capital is surging. Sixth, divestment from fossil fuels is really picking up speed. Institutions with almost 15 trillion US dollar under management have already signed up to divestment policies. JP Morgan Chase, the investment bank with the biggest fossil lending portfolio, has now made a pledge to align its financing with the Paris Agreement. Big in this institutional investors like BlackRock with its 8.7 trillion assets under management are turning against fossil fuels. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, diagnosed a fundamental reshaping of finance in his 2020 letter to CEOs, driven by the recognition that climate risk is investment risk. And just recently, he wrote in his 2021 letter that the tectonic shift in financial markets accelerates away from fossil fuels. Seventh, multilateral development banks like the World Bank and export credit agencies are moving away from fossil fuels. Almost all have some exclusion of fossil fuels in their books, which they are continuously strengthening. 
The European Investment Bank, as the front runner, excludes all fossil fuel investment, including fossil gas. Expect others to follow, even the big Chinese banks, which are increasingly feeling the pressure to change. Eighth, central banks and the IMF, the big guns in the finance sector, are now weighing in. IMF boss Kristalina Georgieva has made climate a priority in her term and decided that climate risk will be factored into the country assessments made by the IMF staff. Central banks have formed a network for greening the financial system and a few weeks ago the most important central bank globally, the Federal Reserve of the United States, has joined this network. The European Central Bank is expected to move decisively against fossil fuels in its ongoing strategy review, excluding high carbon bonds from asset purchases. We can expect the Federal Reserve under the Biden administration to follow suit quickly. Ninth, fracking in the United States has been bad business for most investors and more so for the public. The sector has been bleeding cash for many years. Some say it is a Ponzi scheme, which has only been viable by a constant injection of new capital to serve earlier investors. But now the time of reckoning has come and fracking companies are cutting capital expenditures rapidly in order to stop the bleeding. My advice, and this is number 10 and last, if you are in a hole, stop digging. Starting with fracking now is trying to swim against the tide. Colombia is going to compete with Saudi Arabia, Qatar and other established low-cost producers in a shrinking market for the last barrels of oil and the last cubic feet of gas that will be burned. It is trying to run faster than others down a street, a street that you already know it is a dead end. So why entering it now? You will have to quit this sector anyway. It will make quitting harder if you do it later. Fracking will leave the country with a legacy of unpayable debt and toxic pollution for generations to come. Fracking, in short, is not a good investment. The smart money has already realized it. It would be a pity if Colombia would be the last to understand this. And I know Colombians are smart and they are not going to do this. Thank you very much.